Right, today I've got another banger for you guys. 2D projections with vectors. This is a very important question. 17 marks, isn't it? Here, there's no funny business in terms of it being a previous further maths concept. Here is just straight normal maths. So, a particle P is projected, and if you haven't seen the previous video, by the way, go and watch it because that is the craziest mechanics question they could ask in A-level maths. So a particle P is projected from a fixed point O on horizontal ground with velocity U bracket I plus CJ meters per second, where C and U are positive. The particle moves free under gravity until it strikes the ground at A, where it immediately comes to rest. Relative to O, the position vector of P is X, Y. Show that this is true. All right, so obviously the first thing we should always be doing is a cheeky sketch. Now, the beautiful thing about vectors or things given in vectors is they've already given you the components, okay? So it said U, I plus C, J. Now, do not be fooled. Students get fooled by this all the time. They have said U as well. So students say 1C, but it's U, U, C. So U, I, the horizontal speed is U, and the vertical speed is U, C. Okay, so make sure you're looking in the right places. Uh, the particle moves under gravity, it strikes at A, relative to the origin, the position vector, so the general position vector is X, Y. Okay, very simple diagram. But they want you to find this. Now, when I see stuff like this, Y in terms of X, I'm thinking Cartesian equations, but I already know these are represented parametrically as we discussed in the last video, right? So, here's my vert, here's my horiz, so you're going to write SUVAT and horizontal distance is speed times time. So generally, the vertical distance above where we have been projecting from is Y. Why? The vertical speed is UC. We don't know the velocity generally. We have minus G and then capital T. Remember, we're going to write down the parametric forms. Here, the horizontal distance is x, the horizontal speed is u, and t is the same no matter which dimension you're looking at. So here we can clearly see t is x over u, which, as I explained again in the previous video, this is why it's such an important video, this is quite key to basically everything, okay? So this we might need to store. I mean, you could derive it very quickly from from uh, first principles again. Here we have S is UT plus half AT squared. So S is UT plus half AT squared. S, which is Y, is the initial speed, which is UC, T. I'm just gonna replace it now, X over U. Half of A, half of this is minus G over two. T squared, when you square this, you get X squared over U squared. Here the U's cancel. And G, they've used as 9.8, they've halved it to give you 4.9. And you can see that gives you the answer, x squared, u squared, there we go. See, when you've done it once or twice, it's actually really easy, this stuff. Famous last words, all right? So that's been shown. It is here, so I'm going to rub it out and um, rub this all out. This T is x over u. I'm actually going to put it here. Because as I have shown countless times, it is a mucho importante equation. So we have from part A, y is cx minus 4.9x squared over u squared. Part B, I. Given that u is 7, might as well do that, right? If u is 7, that's 49. 4.9 over 49 is 1 tenth, so 0 0.1, right? Yeah, let me just replace that, might as well, 0 0.1. Uh, x squared. So there you go, there's your equation of the quadratic, the negative quadratic. So u is, u is 7, O A is R. So this horizontal distance here is R. 
And the maximum vertical height of P above the ground is H. So here we have H. Using part A, so using the quadratic, find in terms of C the value of R. All right, that's easy. Because guys, remember, this is just showing us a, a, a quadratic, right? You basically have this. Yeah, that's your quadratic. So to work out R, all we need to do is find the roots, which means make this equal zero. Okay, we can divide through by x because this is x is zero. We're not interested in that. So you move that over. Uh, the x value is your r. So x is 10c, which is r. Cool. How do we use that to work out h? Well, using symmetry. If that's 10c, this is 5c. What do we do with that? We just want to work out the y value. We just sum it back into here. So we get y, the y value is now h, is cx, c, x is 5c, minus 0 0.1 times x squared. x squared is 25c squared. So h is 5 minus 2.5, which is 2.5c squared. Easiest six marks ever. Given also that when p is at some point q, the velocity of p is at right angles to the initial velocity, find in terms of c the value of x at q. Okay, so somewhere along this quadratic, the particle's velocity is at 90 degrees to what it was at the beginning, okay? So given that when p is at, the velocity of p is at right angle, so perpendicular to the initial velocity. Well, there's my initial velocity. Yeah, remember guys, this is your displacement. The velocity is always parallel to that. That's why it's a tangent here. We're looking for the point where the velocity would be perpendicular to this, 90 degrees. Now, what I'm going to do is move my pen to where it looks like it would be a tangent. It actually kind of looks like here where I put this. That's no coincidence. Well, no, it is a coincidence. Is it no coincidence or coincidence? So we have that. It's about here. I'm just going to label that as being my Q. Where that velocity is at 90 degrees. Now, what do we really know here? I really know it's horizontal speed because that can't change, right? It must be U. I just need to work out what that downward speed would be. And for that, we're thinking about gradients, okay? So, negative reciprocals and all that, yeah? Perpendicular, this is looking like up over across, gradients, negative reciprocals. So, the initial velocity, uh, what am I writing, part C? So my velocity initial is, we're going this way, that way. Although we do know what U is, um, I'll replace that in a second. So the initial horizontal speed is U, and then UC. So the velocity uh, perpendicular will be reciprocate, make one of them negative, okay? Now I already know the, the y value is the one that should be negative, so I'm gonna switch it, uc, and then u, but the y one needs to be negative. Now, this is not technically correct. Why? Because I just told you guys that the horizontal speed needs to be maintained at u. So all we need to do is scale this so that this says u, because we know that like when it comes to gradients, if you have 2, 4, so that's 2, 4, I could have also said 1, 2, because I could just divide everything by 2, right? 1, 2. So you can scale these to get parallel vectors, and especially the parallel vector, which is the one that makes, this, makes sense in terms of our situation. So for that we have to times by one over C. So the, this cancels, we get the velocity perpendicular is U and minus U over C. Nice. So what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the value of X at Q. 
Okay, the value of x at q, we want to find the horizontal distance here. So the value of x means the horizontal distance. Okay. How do we find that horizontal distance? Well, if you think about it horizontally, we have distance is speed times time. Horizontally, the speed is fixed at u. So it means we need to work out the time. But the horizontal is not going to help us work out the time because it's the horizontal that we're trying to find the time for. <laughs> so we need to focus on the vertical and find the value of time. And then we can basically use our OG equation to work out what x is. Okay, we just do t times u. So for the vertical, we need to look at SUVAT. At Q, do we know how high it is above the ground? We don't. Do we know the initial velocity vertically? Yes, it's UC. Okay. Keep in mind, guys, U is 7. I don't know why I've not changed it yet. Should we just change it now? You guys might be getting angry with me. I just like, I just prefer working with things generally. So we have 7 and 7 over C. This is 7C. Uh, do we know the velocity there? We do, actually, yeah. That's the whole point of this, minus 7 over C. A is minus G, so minus 9.8. And T is just T, which we're trying to find, isn't it? Cool. V is U plus AT. V is U plus AT. I haven't used that in a long time. So T is going to be V minus U over A. Would it be better if we write in terms of G? I wonder. They don't really tell us. Do you remember? Da, da, da. So T is V, which is minus 7 over C, minus U, which is 7C, divided by, I'm going to write minus G. And obviously, we can clean that up. All the negatives cancel. Times top and bottom by C, so we get T is 7 plus 7C squared over CG. Yes, that's me timesing everything by C to get rid of that denominator. And then I guess you can factorize out 7. Uh, should we just do that? So we get 7, 1 plus C squared all over CG. And then we can now work out x. x is ut, where u is 7 now. Yeah, u is 7. So therefore, x, x is 7 times 7, so 49, over g. But that, does that, that gives me a nice number, surely. 49 divided by 9.8 is 5. So this 7 squared over g gives me 5, 1 plus c squared, all over c. And that is my answer. Again, a very, very tricky question, okay? So it's very important, guys, that you save this video and you check out the video from yesterday. So many skills being practiced here. But guys, if you learned something today, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content, and... If you're interested in my A-level maths courses, more details are in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the community. Link to that is in the description. I'll see you in the next video. Nice one, white.